Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Ready for an amazing day? I hope the start of your day is incredible, too. Take a look at this right here. Of course, Ivy in her water. Oh, man, that is absolutely incredible. Of course, the water is going to clear up. It's just still going through that bacterial plume. In a week or two, that's going to be clear as day. And I want to just give you an update to start the day of the animals that are over here at the Reptarium. Uh, we only have a handful of things in right now, but they're doing really well. I'm super excited about having animals here. And over the next week, week and a half, whatever, a lot of animals are going to go in. As a matter of fact, most cages will be filled up. Obviously, the 13th is coming up our grand opening, so that is going to be right around the corner, and we're definitely going to have a lot of animals, uh, basically new animals, things coming in. It's going to be so absolutely exciting. Of course, Marshmallow is loving his new enclosure, looking amazing in here. It's, uh, it's cool, again, just to kind of get him out. Now I can actually show him around with some people that come in on tours, and pretty soon people are going to be able to just be right through here. But Marshmallow is doing absolutely amazing. Oh, and this is my pet sloth here. I wish I had an absolute sloth. Oh, here's the uh, massage room looking good right now. Of course, getting ready. We've got to still fix it out. That's pretty cool. Al Machino is doing amazing. Let's go ahead and just open up, see how he's doing over here. He loves his new habitat. Al, you're doing so good, bud. He always hangs out right here. This is his spot, but I'll find him climbing all over the place. Absolutely loving the way he looks in this enclosure. I mean, it is so awesome to see the animals over here, especially things like Al. Of course, salt and pepper will go in pretty soon. Over here, Moo Moo, remember how we move Moo Moo from up here where the Lewis Eye Hybrid is? Of course, we'll take a look at her really quick. And she's looking great. Again, still a little bit skittish but doing well, eating really well, settling in really good. It's okay, baby. And we do need a name for her. Again, she's a Cuban Cayman Blue Iguana Cross, Lewis Eye Cross. So we need a name for her. She's going to eventually get like the size of Bella. You know, they are basically the same type of thing. Same say Clara, just different subspecies. But again, she's settling in. Still a little bit skittish, but not too bad. But remember I had said that I moved Moo Moo down into this enclosure here. And I tell you what, that was absolutely the right choice. I mean, look at how great Moo Moo looks. This enclosure is absolutely incredible for it. Loves to climb around. It's completely fine where it is. Now you can actually see it instead of it hiding all the the time. So uh, Moo Moo is great. Can't wait to get her kind of more socialized to people and stuff like that because it's going to be absolutely incredible. We actually have a shipment of snakes that are coming in here any minute now and I'm super excited about these. A couple of them are going to be in the Reptarium. A couple are just, you know, BHB animals, but nevertheless, uh, place is looking good. All these habitats are going to be filled up pretty soon. It's, uh, it's coming together, guys. It's coming together. Let's go ahead, wait for that unboxing and go check out some new animals. And this is the shipment. I am pretty excited to see what is in here. You know, I love unboxing stuff, and it's just kind of cool when uh, we're getting new stuff, when, uh, you know, you're so busy with the build, you're doing all this stuff every now and then. I need some new animals, you know, to inject into my excitement and stuff like that. All right, so what do we have? Uh, of course, we've got zip ties, so you know what that means. Literally one of the best gifts you guys have ever sent me was these clippers here, so I can clip these things. So you guys know that we got... Peruvian red tails a few weeks ago, and then we got some Guiana red tails a little bit after that. Well, guess what? Oh my, oh my God, these things are so incredible. Now we have Suriname red tail boas. So that's basically like the big three, to be totally honest with you. You have Suriname, Guiana, and Peruvian are typically what you see. Of course, there's Bolivians and a whole bunch of other stuff, but these are the three most common in, oh my gosh, I tell you, you know, I don't know which ones are my favorite. You know, the Guianids have this like really cool kind of purplish look to them. Their tails are absolutely incredible. Then you have the Peruvians that are kind of like the biggest one that usually have the longest, most red tails of all. But then you have the Syrenams like this that are typically like really beautiful, light animals with that super red tail. I mean, I tell you what, I can never pick. And you know, there's not a huge difference between any of the three, to be totally honest with you. All of them are pretty red ridiculous, you know, but there is little subtleties and just take a look at that tail right there. Oh, but hey, where are you going little buddy? I got an escaper over there. Look at that. Oh my gosh, these things are unbelievable. And like I said, you don't see them around that often. Captive babies come around like once a year. Usually we have maybe a shot at a few Guianas, a few Surinams, and usually never get an opportunity to get Peruvians. So this year I was super excited to get those. So that is absolutely amazing. So we actually have three bags of these. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other ones. All right, let's see. And I'm not expecting them to look all that different. I mean, certainly when you get down to the individuals of each one, uh, each one's going to have their little 
couple different colors. You know, some are gonna have like, look at this right here. Oh my God, that's incredible. I mean, look at those saddles right there. Those saddles are so thick and just unbelievable. And that's cool. You know, some people want that really thick saddling and then some people like the really thin saddling. So it, there's gonna be some differences, but all in all, they look kind of similar, right? Where? So much paper in here. Where is all, why is just all this paper around here? Let me get to snakes for gosh sakes. And you can see this animal here has a little bit thinner saddles and then they're connecting saddles. And then these would have what they call widow's peaks, really heavy widow peaks right there. So all in all, unbelievably beautiful babies. And again, like the Colombian boas, uh, these guys are born a little bit bigger, but not really big. This is about the size of what a baby would cost. So these guys are only a couple weeks old, but oh my gosh, just looking through this bag, it's ridiculous. There's so many of them. And again, I bought every one that I could possibly buy. You know, I was like I'll take every one of them just because I love them. We'll probably hang on to a few of them obviously like we always do. I'm sure the crew always likes to buy a couple of them and then the rest of them will eventually go up on the website and stuff like that but we'll get them eating and get them settled in so a couple weeks from now you'll see these guys two three weeks from now something like that when we feel like they're really established we'll start to slowly put the ones that are doing really well on the website. Let's look at this last bag really quick and then we do have uh, a couple other animals that uh, I'm just getting a little peek of in this box that I'm pretty darn excited about about. Make sure there's no snakes in there. Oh, man, that is incredible. Just take a look at this, guys. Unbelievable. Look at this. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. These things are crazy. Oh my gosh, I tell you what. And again, these are gonna get pretty big. You know, Surinams aren't quite as big as Peruvians, but they still get really nice and large and really impressive. Wow, I tell you what blown away. I've never had this many red tail boas in a year ever. I, I just wish I could keep them all to be totally honest with you because they're all amazing. And just take a look at the pink on this one. I mean that is going to be a ripper when it gets older. Oh my gosh. You don't see as much pink on Surinams as this particular one. This is, this is unbelievable and that tail red as could be on Believable, and it's kind of funny, you know. I'm showing off this unboxing. My hands look like workers' man's hands now. I got—they're all stained up, they're cut up, they're scraped up. I mean, oh my gosh, uh, you know what you got to do when you're building a new reptarium type of thing, right? You're going to get a little bit beat up. So let's go ahead and move on to these. Whew, I tell you what, guys, this is honestly an animal that really is responsible for a lot of my unbelievable like obsession with snakes, and. Unbelievable. Take a look at, I'm gonna open this thing up. Ah, of course, look at this guys. Ow, it just bit me. Look at this. A little baby emerald tree boa. Oh my gosh. And again, I saw a picture of a baby just like this when I was probably 12 years old, 11 years old, something like that. And I was blown away. I was like, oh my gosh, what is that snake? And I've been obsessed with them ever since. We have a couple adult emerald tree boas about to get another animal that you guys will flip out about here in the next week or so. These guys, of course, are octogenic, which means they basically are red as babies and then turn into green as a adults. Unbelievable. You can see little green dots on it. And that's the thing about emeralds is that as babies you'll still see some green dots on them. Unlike the green tree pythons that are pretty much red and yellow. These guys you'll already start to see the green and then as they get to you know six eight months old or something like that they start getting more and more green. But this guy is an angry little monkey too. And again they have really large teeth. There's no doubt about that. So I'm not going to stress this guy out anymore. I'm going to get him back and we'll get these guys set up here today. Oh gosh he's biting me like crazy. And even at the size, their teeth are pretty crazy. So we'll get these guys set up. That was the boy, and this is the little girl right here. Unbelievable. Now what's nice about sexing emerald tree boas compared to green tree pythons that are pretty much impossible to sex as babies, because if you try to avert their hemipenes, you'll actually kink their spine. They have a very, very gentle spine and very, very fragile. And this one's gonna light me up too. But these guys, you can actually spur sex. So as babies, you'll see males will have pretty good spurs. Females won't have any spurs or very, very little spurs down at their vent so uh, you can actually sex them right as babies but look at that this is my little girl right here she is a ripper unbelievable I was super excited because again baby emerald tree boas don't come around too often either so when you get the opportunity you got to jump on them so I just got a pair gonna hang on to these guys I am over the top crazy happy about this of course these will go over in the reptarium as well here pretty soon so uh, I'll get these guys set up I mean they're 
there it is guys <laughs> some unboxing let's get back over the rep we got a lot to do so we actually just got one of the displays for the gift shop so uh, it's basically a round circle that has multiple tiers that we can put a bunch of stuff on so uh, just to add to the shelves that are going in today as well so uh, the gift shop is starting to come together where I actually have the shelves that are gonna get installed. I'll show you how that goes. But right now we actually have a little countertop area here that just showed up. So Lori and myself are gonna put that together. That way we start seeing where that can go. Of course, there'll be a counter over there. There'll be the shelving where all the stuff goes. So this is really exciting. I've been super, super stoked on the gift shop. And this is Lori's baby, I'll be honest with you. So let's go ahead and just put this thing together and see what it looks like. Take a look at this, guys. Got another little baby gargoyle hatching. Oh my God, it's so cute. And oh, look it, there's actually another head sticking out too that's right we got one more head this is obviously a sibling look at this one this is a striped animal oh come on little monkey come on little monkey there you go look at how awesome that oh gosh these guys are so quick as babies of course we're hatching a lot of gargles oh what's the matter little buddy you upset they are so absolutely adorable so again we got one little baby and this is a red velvet female that's bred to nosferatu male and the other one is hatching out right now so that is awesome so a couple more baby geckos gargoyle geckos we have some really cool stuff obviously we've got the dracula line that's still to hatch uh hoping for some deadpool line but nevertheless uh, awesome to hatch some cool new caledonian geckos all right so it's all installed so uh it looks good again we're not sure exactly it's gonna be in this area somewhere can there be like shelves up here some shirts countertop over here but uh looks good what do you think laurie i love it i know it turned out it's so even good. better than i hope so. i know it's Super so good happy. we just have to put the little things in here to cover up and uh it looks good so uh there it is uh the gift shop is starting to come together i've mentioned it a million times it's the little finishing touches on things that make the difference right you know i mean the big stuff is amazing but it's the little details that sometimes people don't even realize that make things look amazing so uh we have these obviously pillars here that will ultimately be all like feathered out and stuff like that with Lari, but you can see they go up about six or eight inches on the top but because they're only a half round moon obviously you can see that they stop you know so we're trying to decide what to do do we cut them off or whatever Lori brought up the fact that could we try to make it look like an all-around lock so I've got an idea to cut some cardboard out to finish the circle and then wrap them a little bit so hopefully that they look good so I'm not sure if it's gonna work but I have an idea so let's jump in and see if it does because if it does it's gonna look really amazing from up here you're gonna see the log go all the way around and then we can put some foliage that like grows out of the top of them again those little details are what makes things amazing <laughs> Not exactly perfect because the colors don't match 100%, but you gotta remember one thing is is that once we get the flowers and the pots, you're really not gonna see it. The other thing is, and except for you guys that know I did this, a lot of people are just gonna think that that is a pole that runs straight through. From back here, it looks like it's a round pole. So uh, I think mission accomplished, it worked out well. Now I just have to finish these last couple on this side. Okay, one more job down, continue to punch it out. It looks all right, again, once we seam it up and stuff like that, you're really not even gonna be able to see it, put some foliage in there and stuff like that. So, uh, good, I'm, I'm happy with the way this one turned out. Well, we've removed all of the stairs. They're supposed to be there. All the way up there. Ah. Oh. Oh. Only one or two more. Oh. Waiting for my guys to show up with the shelving unit. It actually, they were supposed to be here like, an, I don't know, like an hour and a half, two hours ago. I guess apparently they built these shelves and they were so big where they built them, they couldn't get them out. And they had to like take their stairway out and stuff like that to get these things out. And still it was too big. So they had to maybe disassemble them a little bit. I, I don't know. I haven't heard from them in like an hour and a half or two hours. So I'm hoping the shelves show up today for the gift shop, but there's a chance uh, they may never get out of this guy's house. 
two hours later. So what happened, guys? What? What? what, what you guys are like four hours late. Brian likes like big things, yeah. large, <laughs> in your face. Like, well, have this a looks four great. Foot wide one. We had to have a five foot wide one. Oh, so the five foot that. Was yeah, the problem. Yeah, the so extra foot got us. We so removed 13 of my brother's steps and almost cut a hole yeah. in his wall. Had to still we break apart all the way through the steps, all the way up till it hit the ceiling. When it got through the hallway. So oh after we did that, everything was already glued, screwed. <laughs> Together oh, we had to get chisels and chisel everything oh apart, and tear it apart, separate it. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry tear guys, apart. I apologize. <laughs> Holy cow, so oh, well, you made it. Man. Don't worry, so, it looks gross too, this, so you're yeah, not even going to like it. This close to making it come take apart. Take it back so. home, take it, this isn't at all what I wanted. So, all right, well, let's get them in, all right guys. All right, cool. thanks guys. Insane. <laughs> So I couldn't be more happy with the way these shells turned out. Obviously, it was a little bit of a bear for my buddies to get it here, but uh, they did an absolutely amazing job. Again, one more thing kind of checked off the list. It's coming together March 13th. Weekend's gonna be absolutely amazing. Hopefully, you guys will join us. If you can't come here, you'll see it online for sure. Thank you guys always for your support. You mean the world to me. Do you know I started a podcast channel? It's called Checking In. You can subscribe to that right here. It's pretty fun. Right here, you can run through a playlist of a bunch of old vlogs. On this side, you can subscribe to the vlog channel. You can turn those post notifications notifications on for me. Have an absolutely wonderful day. You better be kind to someone. I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.